Welcome back, knuckleheads. I am Lupine Fiasco, and this is your daily fab gameplay. For anyone who's new to the channel, welcome to the jungle. What we do here is review replays of games that I played on the Talishar client days or weeks ago, after enough time has passed that I lose my bias and can more objectively judge the quality of my play. I will talk through turn cycles and give my thoughts on the line I would take now compared to the line I took then at the time of recording. We either learn from my mistakes or reinforce good play patterns with the overall goal of tightening and optimizing our gameplay in the future to take down paper events and, most importantly, walk away with that shiny, shiny cardboard. If you'd like to check out the list I'm playing here or try it for yourself on Talishar, there is a Fabry deck link in the video description below. While you're down there, if you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. A YouTube subscription is the best free way to support me and to make sure that you see daily fab gameplay in your video feed five days a week. The best paid way to support me is through Patreon, and a Patreon link is also in the video description. A Patreon subscription will get you access to the DFG Discord. At higher tiers, your name will appear in every DFG video. You'll get bonus DFG content every week, and there are even more benefits coming down the pipeline. Daily Fab gameplay will always be free five days a week, so for those who can afford to patronize me, I truly appreciate it. Now, let's talk about our sideboard and about our game plan. Having lost the die roll, we will be going first in this matchup. Had we won the die roll, we would want to go second. Um, we have AB3. So going second in this matchup means that we are going to draw a significant number of blues and yellows in order to prevent any damage that Kano does on his first turn, which effectively wastes his first turn unless he's able to play a potion. Um, we then get to go second, which is going to give us full tempo in the game as Kano needs to start blocking out our attacks. However, going first does mean that we can set up any sort of agility or might based on discarding a windup and we can potentially threaten Kano's life total if he does any sort of Kano activations on our first turn. We can AB it out then send a claw or maybe a pack hunt or a swing big. As far as our equipment goes, we are on AB3 Spell Void 1 with Fiendal Spring Tunic. Uh, very quickly want to touch on Spell Void versus Beaten Trackers. A lot of KO players are on trackers in the Kano matchup because of stacking Kano. Uh, the difference between traditional Kano and stacking Kano is that traditional Kano is going to look for that wildfire blazing aether combo. Stacking Kano is going to do a lot more blocking, play defense reactions, use balance of justice in order to set up a pitch stack that he will run into after about 10 turns. And if he can live for 10 turns, then he just kills us. Uh, he's going to Kano a bunch of times into Red Tomes, Aether Wildfires, Blazing Aethers, send off multiple Aether Wildfires by sacrificing three energy potions that he would have played over the course of those 10 turns, and no amount of AB or Spell Void is going to save us. So many KOs are on beaten trackers in order to attempt to race Kano, but based on the amount of go again I am playing in this list, that being nine wild rides and pulpings plus three enlightened strikes plus six agile windups, means that I am not concerned about racing Kano. I think that we can easily beat Kano's clock, and if he is stacking, then we don't need trackers. So I'm instead hedging for traditional Kano, which, as a spoiler, is what this Kano will be doing. The big hint when you load into your game is to see if Kano is on Ragamuffins or on Balance of Justice. If Kano is on Balance of Justice, he is stacking you. And if Kano is attempting to stack, he will be on Balance of Justice. Ragamuffins does not provide the defensive value that Kano needs to beat KO. As far as whether we are on Cast Bones or Runner Runner, we will be cutting one of those two in order to bring in Yellow Wild Ride. In this game, I'm on Cast Bones. Since then, I've talked to some very good Kanos and gotten some more reps in the matchup and believe that Runner Runner is the way to go. 
We want more attacks. We do not want to give Kano a turn off by playing Cast Bones. So we're going to keep Runner Runner. If we can put that Agility token down and refresh it with Runner Runner, that's huge for us. And especially if Kano is stacking, we have full liberty to discard windups to make agility rather than holding them for Arcane Barrier. So because this is traditional Kano, we are just racing. Uh, we are trying to do more damage to him faster than he can do damage to us. We are attempting to do good uh, Arcane Barrier. So we're just going to submit deck and see what exactly that looks like. Our opening hand here is not good. We're going to discard this Agile Windup, make Might and Agility, and look to Arsenal this yellow Agile Windup. Ideally, we wouldn't do any of this, um, but we are now going to present Kano with the opportunity to do something to us on our turn. Um, we're really hoping that he just sends some Arcane Damage our way. Very lucky Blind Kano here, drawing into Red Tome. Uh, is going to give him that five card hand. Hopefully he keeps going. If not, we just arsenal Agile Windup and uh, keep two blues, which again will let us Arcane Barrier. Um, but we really do want to now hold on to these blues. If we could send a pack hunt, send packing, that'd be great. But Kano does flip a snapback into an Aether Spindle, so we are going to have to start pitching to Arcane Barrier. Uh, we're not going to let Spindle connect for five. Now, Kano breaking the Energy Potion here is extremely greedy, uh, which I love to see as a KO player because Kano getting to keep an Energy Potion on the board from turn one is pretty bad for us. So we are going to AB3 here. At this point, with a Wind up in Arsenal. We can only do one thing this turn, so between Send Packing or Pack Hunt, we're going to need to decide what exactly that one thing is. Kano following up here with a Snapback for three means that we can either pitch our Pound Town into AB3 to prevent all of that damage, or we could pitch a Pack Hunt into AB1 to prevent one of it, taking two, going to 36 then throwing Send Packing at Kano. Uh, we could also pitch Send Packing for AB2, Send Pack Hunt for seven, and keep a floating resource for Arcane Barrier. I like pitching Pack Hunt here. We AB1, we Send Packing for seven. We're leaving ourselves vulnerable to any sort of Arcane damage, but very unlikely that Kano can clear this card out of his arsenal at instant speed unless he is also breaking Storm Striders to do it. And with us at 36 life with Spellfray Leggings, Kano cannot kill us unless he rolls very high. So I'm very comfortable sending 7 at Kano and letting him try to figure this out. Now him banishing Zap off of the first Kano uh, speaks very well for what this turn is going to look like. It's going to be very difficult for him to clear out this arsenal unless he draws Chain Lightning. Uh, Kano will get to zap Chain Lightning, Lightning play this card from Arsenal at instant speed. Uh, so we'll see what exactly that looks like here. We are just shields down, so we're taking all of this damage. Chain Lightning for three, zap for one, and spoiler alert, it's Blazing Aether. So unfortunately we are punished for being shields down here. Any point of arcane barrier we could have put into the chain lightning or the zap would have effectively been worth two points as this blazing aether is now coming in for four. That said, we are still at 28. That is pretty comfortable. Kano gonna take seven here. We will have tunic up on our next turn. So hopefully we can draw into some gas. Drawing into Cast Bones, we can already see how this is pretty clunky with our Wild Ride. 
Um, what we can look to do here is E-Strike for five go again, bottom the wild ride, then playing cast bones. We keep a blue in our hand to pitch to Arcane Barrier. We also keep a blue so that we can pay for our next turn. Uh, we do get value out of our cast bones. The other line would be to E-Strike for five go again, bottom cast bones. We can then pitch our blue to play Agile Windup from Arsenal and Arsenal a wild ride instead. I think, talking it out, that's what I want to do instead. I want to pressure Kano. I want to force him to block instead of letting him just keep cards. If Kano takes five from the E-Strike, then keeps five cards because we played Cast Bones, I'm very nervous about Kano having five cards on his turn. So let's E-Strike go again, bottom Cast Bones, play Wind Up from Arsenal. Choosing not to do that, very likely following up with Cast Bones, which again, depends a lot on what Kano's block is. Kano blocking with a card from hand means that we may be able to catch him without much to do on our or his turn. Uh, instead, just coming in with Nourishing Emptiness. Without any sort of blocking equipment, we are just going to take this damage, putting us to 22, not a comfortable life total against Kano. We can block for three, go to 25, but we are still giving Kano a six card hand going into our turn. Thankfully, we have two blues, we have an open tunic, but uh, I could certainly be feeling better about my life total at this stage of the game. Kano activating Kano in response to the Command and Conquer trigger seems fairly interesting to me, as opposed to doing it in response to the Command and Conquer being played. Tome here just drawing more cards for Kano. Potentially, he would have wanted to block with any of these. So I'm a little confused, but I'm not a Kano player. Uh, to me, I'm perfectly happy to let Kano just make mistakes. That said, Banishing Gaze off of Kano, pretty solid here. All right, we've got a double Kano activation on the stack. I'm sensing a Ragamuffins. Thankfully, we have a floating resource, a blue in hand, tunic, and spell fray leggings. Which makes me think Kano uh, pretty unlikely to be able to kill us. Kano does not have the energy potion. Uh, we see a wildfire off the top, so at this point, deciding whether or not we are going to break spell fray. Um, Kano does use Tunic. With Ragamuffins being down, I think using Spell Fright is okay. The real sign to go or not would be Kano breaking Storm Striders. Um, we haven't seen it yet, but throwing everything we have into the Storm Striders turn really is like he only gets to do this once. So we feel okay about putting everything into stopping that. Uh, this being six, we are going to AB3. That's easy. I think putting Spell Fray Leggings into this as well, definitely the correct call. Without Kano having done Storm Striders already, it's a tougher decision, but he did Ragamuffins, and the combo really does depend on having Ragamuffins to make sure that he is Kanoing an Aether or a Wildfire off the top of the deck. So we can keep ourselves at a very comfortable life total here, knowing that Kano does not have rags available. Okay, he's going for it. Blazing Aether just comes in for seven. I mean, the game is certainly not over, Kano can definitely kill us at 13, but we still have AB3. Uh, it will be very difficult for him to do so, especially when we draw into um, a Blood Rush. Because Agile Windup is our only blue, 
I don't love discarding it here. I think we are fine to just play Blood Rush. We even keep a pack hunt, so we are going to get to Claw for five go again, follow up with pack hunt. Uh, we will be presenting lethal here. Now drawing into two more reds is pretty tragic for us, but we can at least send Claw first, uh, then follow up with a Bear Fangs. Bear Fangs will be presenting lethal. Pack Hunt would potentially make blocking awkward for Kano, but Kano is already going to have to do awkward blocks. Um, my thinking is he can block six pretty easily either way if either of these cards in his hand block. Um, Bear Fangs will be presenting lethal, so he will need to deal with that in some way. At this point, Kano does not have Tunic, is put at one. Um, it will be pretty difficult for him to kill us. So playing Tome is going to let him draw cards. He will be able to do something on his turn. But opening up with a Kano activation feels okay. Now, ripping Gaze off the top is pretty bad for us. Um, we'll see what he has coming up. but we at least have a pulping that we can play. We will have a yellow that we can follow up with. Uh, I feel okay about where we are. Emeritus Scolding just coming in for two. Uh, for three, we will AB that. I think we should be pulping Pitching Agile Windup. It's a little tempting to pitch Beast Within instead so that we don't accidentally take more damage from discarding it, but I do think the upside of putting an additional card in our hand is going to be worth the extra point of damage. At a minimum, we take one and draw a red, which we pitch into AB1. At a maximum, we take one and draw into a blue, which is effectively worth three life if Kano's trying to kill us. So we do present seven. It does have Dominate. Kano does now need to kill us. And we do have a yellow that we are going to be able to pitch into AB2. Kano drawing pretty well. Ripping a Blazing Aether off the top is kind of what he needs to kill us. But the blue Voltic Bolt is going to be a bit of an issue. Uh, we will pitch into the Voltic Bolt. That AB2 effectively worth AB4 considering that the follow-up is Blazing Aether. Uh, Kano being able to snap back for four, we have to take it. And Blazing Aether coming in for five will put us to three, and then Kano will die. So a pretty close game, honestly, for how far Kano was from killing us on the combo turn. This ended up being very close. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily anything that I would have done better. In general, don't pitch to AB on Kano's turn. Save it for your turn. That said, we never overpitched. We never gave up resources on Kano's turn that we then missed on our turn. Uh, we were generally able to do the things that we needed to be doing, and I think the two reds off the top from a uh, Blood Rush Bellow put us into more of an awkward spot than we necessarily could have assumed we would be in had we ripped a blue or even a yellow. Um, so maybe some variance on our part. I think our Kano flipped fairly well off the top. Multiple gaze, the A, there's a tome at the start of the game. But overall, I think I navigated this game well. Maybe Kano players can tell me in the comments where I could have improved or pitched wrong or should have waited or... Maybe this other Kano just drew very poorly and I'm not adept enough at the hero to know where that happened. But I do hope you enjoyed this game. I hope you learned something. Uh, if so, be sure to take that like button to Pound Town. My comments are always open for any questions or feedback. Again, if you've not already done so, please consider a YouTube subscription. It's free. It helps me out. But no matter what you do, catch me back here next week for more Daily Fab gameplay. 
And until then, take care.